What's going on, Dead by Daylight family? It's your boy, Negus, and I'm coming at you today with another video. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to deal with those teams that don't want to cleanse. Every once in a while, you're going to go against teams that stay broken the whole entire match. And the main reason why they do this is to deprive you of your corrupt perch. So this means you are pretty much just going to be a M1 killer for that whole entire match. She has a lot of tools in her main base kit that you could use for tracking and navigating to know exactly where survivors are. And the more you play against these kinds of teams is the more you will have a solid understanding of how to tap into the plague's main base kit effectively. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be covering that as well as later on in the video. I'm going to be talking about some things that you could bring into your matches to make it a lot easier to go against these kinds of teams. All right. If you are new to my channel, I am a plague main and a upcoming hag main, and I do post informative gameplay for those killers. If you do enjoy that sort of content, don't forget to like the video, hit the subscribe and the bell notification down below. Let's get into it. So if you're new to the plague and you haven't faced this kind of team yet, it might be quite difficult for you because it is a different play style of what beginner plagues are used to because in beginner ranks, survivors tend to just cleanse often. So you'll have constant access to your corrupt pool. So if you do face a team that is not cleansing, you really have to make sure you make that one pool of corrupt purge that spawns in by default count, okay? You gotta grab it at the right time and make sure you get some decent value out of it. So I did post a video a couple weeks ago on how to know when it's the right time to grab Corrupt Purge. If you do have difficulties knowing when to grab your Corrupt Purge, go and check that video out. And I do give you some informative pointers on when to grab your Corrupt Purge throughout your matches. I'm going to be going into great detail of the pros and cons of survivors being broken so that you could have a proper understanding of how to master the plague's main base kit power to help you in those matches against teams that don't cleanse. So for the pros, yes, you are a M1 killer for the whole entire game, but this means the survivors are one shot down. Okay, so the survivors are broken from your sickness. So this means they are vulnerable for one hit. So think of it of you having haunted ground for the whole entire match. If the whole entire team is broken and you grab your corrupt purge, this means you are a machine gun huntress with eerie head hatchets. And what I mean by this is the plague can continuously send streams of puke on survivors. All it takes is one little drop of corrupt perch to hit them and they are down. So another pro of teams being broken the whole entire match is that you will know exactly where they are because you will hear them coughing and puking. A lot of people underestimate how well the play can track on the map and know exactly where survivors are in her vicinity. And if you do have a headset, this is going to make it much, much easier to determine exactly where survivors are on the map. So I want to give you guys an example. I recently just got a better headset and I can now hear exactly where a survivor is in a jungle gym. I'll know exactly which part of the jungle gym they're running to. If they are leaving that jungle gym, I'll be able to hear that cough in the distance, letting me know they are leaving that jungle gym. So the better headset you have is a easier it'll be to hear survivors on the map. One of the plague's main sources of tracking is when you puke on a non-infected surface area, for example, a generator. If a survivor that is non-infected interacts with that generator, they will become infected. So what you want to look out for is their name slash logo turning green. This means they interacted with one of the surface areas you puked on. This is very important in the early game because you'll be able to track and know exactly where survivors are on the map. If survivors are broken and they interact with a non-infected surface area, that surface area is going to have puke on it, okay? So if a gen, if they go on a gen and they leave that generator, you know that that survivor interacted with that specific 
generator not too long ago. So this might mean they are in your vicinity. So you might want to walk around and just listen for coughing to know exactly where they are. The plague has one more source of tracking and I don't know why it's not talked about a lot. When survivors are broken, they'll have a green gas around their body so it'll be easier to see them on the map. So if you're playing on darker maps like for example Yamaoka Estate, Yamaoka Estate is a very dark map and if you look off in the distance, you will be able to see survivors easier and it'll be harder for them to blend in with their surroundings. So the plague's tracking is really, really good. And the fact that if survivors do want to play this broken game, the whole entire match, you'll be able to easily pinpoint where they are on the map if you are nearby. Another pro is that the plague is able to counter some things that a survivor may bring in a match. So for example, the plague is able to counter iron will because iron will only works if a survivor is injured, but it doesn't work if a survivor is infected. So you will be able to hear that survivor coughing even if they have iron will. The plague is also able to counter any healing perks. If a survivor is broken from your sickness, they won't be able to use perks like inner strength, botany knowledge, we'll make it, and the list goes on. Because the plague is able to counter these things, if any survivors are using those specific perks or items, that means they're wasting a perk slot or a item slot. So I think we covered all the pros, let's get into the cons. And the major con is that you won't have consistent access to your corrupt purge throughout the match. So you are going to have to make great, great value out of that one default corrupt pool that spawn in in the beginning of your match. Another con is if you are going against experienced survivors, it is gonna take you much, much longer to catch them, especially if you are a M1 killer at this time. And if they are using exhaustion perks, this will prolong the chase even more. The best advice I could give you during these situations is getting the experience of knowing how survivors loop and try to mind game them at specific loops, maybe doing moonwalks or doubling back, doing different techniques to try to confuse them and throw them off guard and try to down them because remember they are one shot down. So if they make one mistake, that's it for them unless they have dead hard. Another con for survivors being broken is that the survivors will have constant access to dead hard if they are using it or any perks that benefit a survivor being injured, for example, resilience. So those are some cons. So if you are chasing a survivor that is broken, be mindful of dead hard. You might wanna wait a little bit before you smack them, but if they do dead hard for distance, there isn't much you could do about that. For those of you who absolutely hate teams that don't cleanse, I'll show you some things that you could bring into your matches to make it a lot easier for you. I'm gonna start off by talking about two add-ons that the plague has that absolutely counters this kind of playstyle against the plague. And the first add-on is called Black Incense. And what Black Incense does is, if survivors are broken from your sickness, every time they puke, you will get to see their aura for five seconds. So if they are across the map, you will get to see their aura. Black Incense gives you so much information and if survivors don't cleanse, they are in for some trouble because they will not be able to mind game you at loops because you'll know exactly which way they are going. Black Intense is a solid add-on and it is gonna make it much, much easier for you to play against these sort of teams. But keep in mind, you are not always gonna have access to Black Incense. The Plague's next add-on that is really, really good against these sort of teams are her Apple add-ons. And what the apple does is it spawns you a extra pool of corrupt perch. This means you will have more access to your corrupt pool. And if all survivors are broken, it will be possibly easier for you to down them. And if you bring in two apples, this means you will have access to three corrupt pools that match. 
so you don't have to worry about survivors not cleansing. So I'm going to talk about the two perks that you can bring into your matches to help to play against these teams that don't want to cleanse. And the first perk is called Blood Echo. And Blood Echo is probably my favorite perk on the plague. And what it does is when you hook a survivor, any survivor that is injured will now suffer from the exhaustion status effect for 45 seconds. So this means you are taking away their precious, precious dead hard, which is really, really big because a lot of survivors depend on dead hard to loop you longer. Blood Echo is really, really good against those teams that don't cleanse and can punish them sometimes for not cleansing. And their survivors know you have Blood Echo. Majority of the time they do reconsider being broken and they start cleansing right away. But in this clip I'm showing you right now, this was a pretty good Swift, all right? And they chose to stay broken the whole entire match. And at the end of the game, I made sure to check if they were using exhaustion perks. And and two of them had dead hard, one of them had sprint burst, and the other one had balanced landing. So that whole entire match, I believe I only had to deal with one dead hard and one sprint burst. That whole entire match. I got some amazing value from Blood Echo because this team didn't want to cleanse. And this was good for me because it shortened the time in my chases. So I was able to down survivors faster than usual. How are you going to know if a team is not going to cleanse before your match starts? You can't really predict this, but there's some things that I do. I kind of have this instinct to tell if I'm going to go against a Swift. So I'm going to give you an example right now. This team was full of nails, all right? And two names had TWM and I'm like, hmm, yeah, this is probably a Swift. So I put Blood Echo on at this time because I kind of had a feeling that they might not cleanse but like i said not every team plays the same okay so don't use this as a way of determining if a team is going to cleanse or not but i'm just giving you some things that you could use to determine if you're going to go against a swift if you haven't tried blood echo on plague please 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 give it a try it is a pretty good perk and the devs said they are going to be giving this perk a buff all right, so I don't know what kind of buff that may be, but guys, be on the lookout for this perk being used more in the future. The next perk is called Thanatophobia, and what it does is for every injured survivor, they will get a 5% penalty when sabotaging hooks, doing generators, or cleansing totems. So if you have all four survivors injured, this means they will get a 20% penalty i do not suggest to pair both blood echo and thanatophobia together i usually just throw in a one in my perk lineup so it could be either blood echo or thanatophobia whatever you like it doesn't really matter all right so for those of you who are new to the plague and have difficulties playing against teams that don't cleanse don't look at it as a bad thing this is a really really important part of learning the plague you have to know how to play against these kinds of teams and the more you play against these teams is the more you will have a understanding of how to really tap in to the plague's main base kit power and know how to track survivors efficiently on the map so that's it for the video i hope you guys found that video informative if you found it informative don't forget to subscribe to my channel i will see you guys in the next one